you started in the stoke hole. You learned to stoke and trim those piles. And then you worked your way around the bridge. It was old machinery, so it'd be nurtured and caressed to continue to work. You know, to learn how to operate it, to manage it, to cope with it, even a breakdown. When the engines ran, they were quite noisy. They were kept really clean, actually, because on a daily basis, if you work the boilers, you're not only stoves, you had to keep the bright, bright work all clean. Same on the engines, you didn't just stand there. There was standards here, where if you went up to the engine rooms, all the oil bottles would be topped up, there'd be no daylight. It was an unusual job in the extent that you were working with very old fashioned machinery. It was still a job that was ruled fairly firmly. The bridge foreman ran the shift side of the job. And what they said went. If they said you did this, you did it. If you didn't, you were out the door and away, you know. You know. It was the sort of instant discipline. Once you have learned to how to do the bridge lift, instead of somebody walking up with me and supervising, you were doing the bridge lift on your own. Not something you forget. Driving a bridge control system, relay control, control desk switches, all the pumps on, powering up machinery, push buttons, switches, rotates the pedestrian lens, casino. I can't do one thing before doing another. Power up the system sequence. Starts all the pumps up, four machine rooms, two main pumps, one auxiliary pump, hydraulic systems, resting blocks. Resting blocks, main pumps, eight pumps, bridge system. Green light, traffic lights to red, road gates on the bridge. Pedestrian gates, press that one button, unlock the bridge, and it's just buttons. Press the button, disengage the poles, hydraulic jack, nose bolts. And that's another button, which we need to move. Got a joystick, all that all goes on the bridge. A joystick, same thing, all the which will go up, experience and judgment, or angle one hand, or leave it back, take that button, Drive the bridge, joystick. Get car's joystick, it's got two speeds, quick speed, very slow, full speed. Joystick, going all the way up, fully armed, quick mode. It's got the same way down, joystick, two way down. Deep, 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 down, deep, 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 down. 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 The bicycle chambers, all the pumps on, within the structure of the bridge. It's a little bit spooky because you've got the, the noise of the traffic. You have to go down two or three ladders, out across to the river, and then climb up another ladder and go actually under the, the road surface, under the main tower. It's quite a feat to get there. Main pumps. You're in like a sort of corridor shaped area. About eight foot sort of square, and then the steps going up within the, in the bicycle chamber itself. The traffic lights to red. Work your way through as well. Press that one it's a little bit tricky. Unlock the bridge. It shouldn't be dangerous. So there are areas where you climb up and down the ladders over the river, so you have to wear a harness and a full arrester. Nose bolts another button. Moving machinery. You don't really want to be in there when the bridge is opening. Or leave a bet for 40p. Bridge would go up. Take her up. Leave her there. My dad's name was William Skinner, or known as Bill Skinner on the bridge. He started off as a temporary for a few months, and those few months lasted 32 years. <laughs> so, he loved the job here, he really did. My grandmother, Hannah Griggs, was born on the 20th of February, 1888. 
She was born in St Olive's workhouse. I remember when I was small and my mum used to bring me to London, my mum saying that my nan was a cook in service in Towbridge. And when I was small, I didn't believe that there could have been anyone employed as a cook in a bridge. Um, obviously I've since learned that there was a whole community of people who lived here. From the top down at the bottom you had, Commander Rabbit was a bridge master. He'd been here for some years. Mr Bywater was the assistant bridge master. Then you had Percy Hall, Wally Warwicka, Tom Ferguson, Stan Fletcher, they were the foreman, duty officers, and then you had Bill Skinner and Fred Story with the charge hands, and then there was Len, Freddy, which is Len and Freddy, and Lofty, I forgot Lofty then, and they basically showed us around a bit and taught us all about the engines. Yeah, the, the people working on the bridge, there were some people at the bridge when I started, We'd actually been here 30, 35 years or more. One of the guys who used to be the bridge driver, I think his name was Bill Skinner, so he'd, he'd been around on the bridge for a long time. He used to make tea, then after a few weeks they brought him in to do the engineers and he did most of his work on the bridge with cleaning the engines. He did a lot of the floodlights that were on the bridge on extremely high levels without any safety things at, at certain points in his life. And then he became an apprentice electrician and then from there he then became the duty, one of the duty officers on Tower Bridge. been here in such an important part of London and the river and it's it's a place that not just Londoners know it's people the world over know this this building this structure I think it is popular because it's an icon of London it's it's built in a gothic style although it was only built in 1894 and it's unique in that respect and the scale of it as a, a bascule bridge an opening bascule bridge and being operational in the centre of the capital, that's what makes it quite unique. You're talking about a bridge which is, what, 130 years old. It was built with technology that was perhaps 10, 12 years old. I mean, the technology was developing when they built it. Mum used to bring me up here all the time. She'd take me uh, round the city and all different things. But obviously it's an iconic building on so many pictures and bags and all the souvenirs in London. It was always something that you viewed from along the embankment or from town of London. For sure the best part about this job for me is the opening and closing of the bridge and being involved in that side of it. Yeah, I, I enjoy that. Um, it's a completely different outlook on the bridge. You know, you've got party boats going under the bridge playing music and tourists walking across, looking at the bridge, taking it all in. Um, it's, it's just great to be part of that. I don't know what it is about this place, it just gets, gets to you. I mean, it, it was a pleasure to come in, it really was. Um, and I worked for these, with these people for about 18 years, or maybe longer, some of them. They cared about this structure, about the bridge, because it, is, it gets into your blood, this place. People actually did enjoy working here. Yeah. I don't think there's many places that can say that. I mean, it's still a great thought for me to know I raised Tower Bridge and was one was then just one of the six licensed guys to raise Tower Bridge as it is now. It was more than a job for, for me and from a lot of the people on the operational side because not only are you physically looking after it and maintaining it, you're operating it as well. So you're there whenever you're required to do bridge lifts. So it's, it's more than just a job. 
it's, it's becomes a way of life.